While salmon has long been an important food source for coastal communities, it became popular in the 1980s, starting with the development of Chile's large-scale Atlantic salmon farming industry. Ideal conditions for aquaculture, seafood farming, and government subsidies allowed Chilean Atlantic salmon to flood global markets at low prices, making salmon an affordable, year-round source of protein for U.S. consumers. At the same time, Norway pushed to introduce its own salmon into more difficult Asian markets. Norway launched a marketing campaign to sell its salmon to Japan, where people disliked raw salmon sushi because of parasites in locally caught wild salmon. Norway's campaign promoted its farmed salmon as a safe and delicious alternative to Japanese salmon. As a result, salmon is one of the most popular sushi ingredients in Japan, and around the world. Today, salmon remains a coveted protein, but consumers are still confused about topics such as species differences, sustainability issues, and wild versus farmed options. We use our 200 plus years of experience as seafood experts to answer everything you need to know about salmon, from its many species to its flavors, popular cooking methods, and health benefits. Salmon is often described as rich and buttery with a slight sweetness. When cooked, the texture becomes smooth and moist with large chunks, while raw salmon has a softer, melt-in-your-mouth texture. Differences between species, environments, diets, fat content, harvesting, and cooking methods all contribute to the delicate flavor of salmon. Overall, salmon is prized for its versatility when it comes to flavor combinations and preparation methods. Salmon get their characteristic pink to orange-red color from their diet, which contains natural pigments called astaxanthin. Astaxanthin is vital to the health of salmon, supporting their metabolic, muscular, and immune functions. Wild salmon eat astaxanthin-rich shellfish and mollusks, while farmed salmon receive astaxanthin as a natural ingredient in their feed for optimal health and color. A genetic condition prevents about 6% of king salmon from processing these astaxanthin pigments, resulting in white or ivory ghost salmon. These rare salmon are prized by some chefs for their unique appearance while retaining the same rich flavor as other king salmon. There are eight species of salmon in total, one Atlantic salmon and seven Pacific salmon. Of these, two Pacific species, Masu and Amago, are native to Asia and are not found in North American waters. Here are six different types of salmon you can find in North America, each with their own characteristics and flavors that make them unique. Atlantic salmon is the most popular salmon consumed worldwide, accounting for over 90% of the salmon consumed in North America. 
Although some wild Atlantic salmon still exist, most are farmed in Norway, Chile, Scotland, and Canada. Atlantic salmon average 6 to 12 pounds with a green back and silver sides. They have a soft, fatty flesh that becomes moist and flaky when cooked. Their high fat content makes them well suited to cooking methods such as baking, roasting, broiling, and boiling. Atlantic salmon is also the most popular species for sushi due to its high fat content, mild flavor, and affordable price. Chinook, king salmon, also known as quinet salmon or blackmouth salmon, king salmon are the largest of the family, sometimes weighing more than 40 pounds. They have metallic blue-gray scales, black spots on their backs and tails, and black mouths. King salmon are abundant in the Pacific Ocean from California to Alaska. King salmon have firm but fatty flesh that ranges in color from ivory to deep red. With the highest fat content of any Pacific salmon and a full flavor, king salmon is well suited for grilling, smoking, roasting, and baking. King salmon is also popular for raw dishes such as sashimi. This prized fish can be found both wild caught and farm raised coho, silver, salmon, also known as silver salmon, coho salmon average 8 to 12 pounds and are recognizable by their dark metallic blue scales and lighter silver flanks. These Pacific salmon are abundant along the coasts from California to Alaska, with a small population in the Great Lakes. Coho salmon have bright orange red flesh that cooks firm, moist, and flavorful. Their moderate fat content and mild, nutty flavor make coho salmon perfect for sautéing, grilling, poaching, and smoking. Traditionally wild, some coho salmon are now farm-raised chum salmon, sometimes called dogfish or calico salmon. Chum salmon are Pacific salmon that average 7 to 18 pounds and are identified by their mottled patches on their backs and tails, as well as their large eyes. They have paler flesh, ranging from light pink to orange. Chum salmon have a lower oil content than other salmon, giving them a mild, delicate flavor. Chum salmon are often canned or smoked, making them great for burgers, soups, stews, and fish sticks. Chum salmon are famous for their roe, called ikara, which is a delicacy in sushi and other dishes. Chum salmon are wild and migrate along the Pacific coast and inland waterways. Pink salmon, the smallest salmon species, weighing only 3 to 5 pounds, pink salmon have a distinct hump on their backs when they spawn. Their skin ranges in shades of pink, green, and silver, with large black spots on their backs. The flesh of pink salmon ranges from white to deep red. Like heater salmon, pink salmon are often canned or smoked. Fresh pink salmon has a delicate flavor and a tender texture that is suitable for smoking, grilling, and baking. Pink salmon are wild fish caught primarily in Alaska and the Pacific Northwest. 
Like Kita Salmon Ikara, Pink Salmon Roe is a delicacy in many dishes. Sakai Salmon, Red, Sakai Salmon get their name from the bright orange-red color of their flesh, which comes from their diet rich in krill. They average 4 to 15 pounds and turn a deep red when they migrate upstream to spawn. In addition to their vibrant flesh, you can also identify Sakai Salmon by their yellow eyes, the lack of prominent spots along their backs, and their white mouths with white gums and black tongues. Sakai salmon are prized for their meaty flavor and silky texture when cooked. Their high oil content makes them suitable for grilling, roasting, poaching, and roasting. Sakai is a wild Pacific salmon caught primarily in Alaska and Canada. Shoppers often wonder whether wild caught or farmed salmon is superior in terms of quality, sustainability, health benefits, and flavor. Both wild-caught and farmed salmon are great options for shoppers when purchased from a trusted source. Here are some of the key differences between wild-caught and farmed salmon wild salmon. These salmon migrate far into the ocean and spawn in freshwater. Due to their active nature, wild salmon have a leaner body composition with a more pronounced meaty flavor than farmed salmon. They are typically higher in omega-3 fatty acids than farmed salmon. Fresh wild salmon is typically available in late spring and fall, and frozen wild salmon is available year-round farmed salmon, like any fish, the flavor of farmed salmon is a result of their habitat and feeding. Because they are fed a controlled diet and do not travel as far as wild salmon, farmed salmon is higher in fat with a milder, buttery flavor. Farming practices allow these salmon to be available fresh and frozen year-round salmon is one of the most closely regulated proteins in the United States and is a sustainable choice when purchased from a trusted supplier. Here is information about sustainability practices for both wild and farmed salmon Wild salmon sustainability, most large fish, such as Alaskan salmon, are healthy choices thanks to strict regulation by state and federal agencies. These fishing regulations prevent overfishing of salmon by setting limits on the number of fish that can be caught each year and the minimum size of fish that can be caught. The type of fishing gear used to catch salmon is also regulated, helping to avoid overfishing and preventing bycatch, the unintentional capture of other species. Ongoing efforts to preserve salmon spawning habitat, and the support of salmon hatcheries ensure healthy wild populations for years to come sustainability of farmed salmon, with responsible practices, farmed salmon can be a sustainable way to meet demand while reducing pressure on wild stocks, which is limited to species like Atlantic salmon. 
salmon farming has been controversial regarding its environmental impact and fish welfare, as some argue that the crowded, stressful conditions and excessive use of antibiotics in salmon pens have negatively impacted the environment through pollution, chemical use and the spread of disease to wild species. We believe that responsibly managed farms committed to sustainable practices, fish welfare and transparency are part of the solution to providing healthy, delicious salmon while protecting wild species. Significant improvements have been made across the industry in recent years to make salmon farming more sustainable. Improvements such as effective diets without chemicals or antibiotics have reduced the footprint of salmon and improved meat quality. Advances in water filtration for land-based fish farming, known as aquaculture, have reduced farm waste from polluting the oceans while allowing up to 99% of water to be reused. To improve fish welfare, many farms are now stocking fish at lower densities or using deeper pens to reduce crowding and stress by giving salmon more space to swim freely. At Fulton Fish Market, we are proud to source our farmed salmon exclusively from producers who focus on environmentally friendly, ethical aquaculture practices and have full traceability from egg to harvest. Both wild and farmed salmon are sustainable choices when sourced responsibly. As a trusted seafood supplier for over 200 years, Fulton Fish Market is proud to exclusively source sustainable salmon from the world's best producers and managed fisheries. Learn more about our sustainable sourcing here an excellent source of protein and omega-3 fatty acids, salmon offers several scientifically proven health benefits improves heart health by lowering blood pressure and triglycerides reduces inflammation to relieve arthritis and autoimmune disorders boosts brain function and prevents cognitive diseases like Alzheimer's rich in vitamin D, selenium, B vitamins, potassium and phosphorus high quality complete protein that supports muscle growth and repair promotes skin and hair health from nutrients like astaxanthin copper river salmon is the name given to prized catches of wild king and sarkai salmon from alaska's copper river Each spring and summer, these salmon make an epic 300-mile upstream migration from the ocean to the glacial waters of the Copper River to spawn. These Copper River salmon are fattened with supplemental feed to sustain their energy during their remarkable journey, resulting in a distinctively rich yet flavorful flavor. This distinctive flavor, as well as their short fishing season, makes Copper River salmon a highly coveted fish. Salmon and trout are both members of the Salmonidae family, making them difficult to tell apart whether you're on the water or at the seafood counter. Here are four key differences between trout and salmon. Salmon are typically much larger, averaging 8 to 12 pounds. However, trout rarely exceed 5 pounds.
salmon are migratory, meaning they are born in fresh water, migrate to the ocean to feed and grow, and then return to fresh water to spawn. Salmonids are mostly freshwater species, with the exception of steelhead and coastal cutthroat trout, which are marine species like salmon. Salmon have shiny silver scales and skin, compared to the rainbow or brown color of many salmon species. Salmon also have deeply forked tails and larger spots, while rainbow trout have squarer tails and smaller spots. Salmon have a richer, creamier flavor than rainbow trout due to their higher fat content. Rainbow trout are generally leaner than salmon, with a milder flavor. Steelhead trout are not salmon, as they are a separate species with their own unique physical, biological, and ecological characteristics. Steelhead trout are a subspecies of rainbow trout, not salmon. Steelhead trout have several physical differences from salmon, including a longer snout and darker skin color. Steelhead trout also have a different life cycle than salmon. Steelhead trout typically spend two to three years in fresh water before migrating to the ocean, while salmon typically spend one to two years in fresh water before migrating to the ocean. As a result, steelhead trout play a more important role in the freshwater ecosystem food chain, while salmon play a more important role in the marine ecosystem food chain. You can absolutely eat salmon skin. Although often discarded as a matter of personal preference, Salmon skin is completely safe, delicious, and nutritious to eat. The skin contains healthy fats, protein, and most of the salmon's vitamin D content. When cooked properly, salmon skin will crisp up beautifully to provide a textural contrast to the tender salmon flesh. Salmon skin has a delicious, umami-rich flavor when cooked. You can find salmon skin on menus all over the world, from Japanese pan-seared salmon skin appetizers to Latin-style crispy salmon chicharrones. Eating salmon skin adds a wonderful crunch and rich flavor to your next meal, so next time you cook a salmon fillet, leave the skin on and enjoy this underused gem when looking at the best places to fish for salmon, it is important to understand that salmon are born in freshwater rivers and streams, but then migrate to the ocean, where they spend most of their adult lives. In preparation for spawning, salmon will return to the freshwater rivers and streams where they were born. This period of time is often referred to as the salmon migration. Depending on the species of salmon, salmon migration occurs at different times in different states. One of the most important tips for fishing for salmon migration is to consider these migration routes and time your trip accordingly. 
Now that you know how to focus on migration routes and fish during migration, you can next decide which salmon fishing technique you want to use. Deciding how to fish for salmon, or which technique you should use, will depend on whether you are fishing from land or from a boat. Since this is a general overview of salmon fishing for beginners, you can start by drifting or trolling. As you gain more experience by learning how to fish for different types of salmon, you can practice more specialized techniques. Drifting is usually done from land and involves casting a line upstream, then letting the bait, the best bait for salmon is salmon eggs, drift down to the area where you think the salmon might be. As the line drifts, you slowly reel it in and then simply repeat the process until you catch the fish. When fishing from a boat, many anglers use a technique called trolling. Drift fishing can be a good way to learn how to fish for salmon in areas with more salmon, such as large rivers or lakes. Learn about different species of salmon, where to catch them, check regulations, and then apply for a state fishing license online. Chinook salmon are the largest species of Pacific salmon, which is why they are often called king salmon. Their range includes coastal Alaska, western Canada, Oregon, Idaho, Washington state, and northern California. Coho salmon are one of five species of Pacific salmon native to Alaska waters extending to California, although coho salmon are also stocked in the Great Lakes, freshwater lakes in Alaska, along the Pacific coast of the United States, as well as in the states of Maine, Maryland, and Louisiana. In North America, chum salmon can be found from the San Lorenzo River California, to northwest Alaska and east to the Peel, Mackenzie, and possibly Anderson Rivers in Canada. Pink salmon can be found from Alaska south to the Sacramento River California, throughout the Aleutian Islands, and northeast to the Mackenzie River, NWT, Canada. Sakai salmon are native to the Pacific Ocean and its tributaries from the Sacramento River, California to Point Hope, Alaska and the United States Atlantic salmon, also known as the king of fish, are migratory, meaning they live in both fresh and salt water. Atlantic salmon have a complex life cycle that begins with spawning and rearing their young in rivers. They then migrate to salt water to feed, grow, and mature before returning to fresh water to spawn. Atlantic salmon are vulnerable to a number of stresses and threats, including dams and culverts that block or impede their migration between freshwater spawning and rearing habitats and the marine environment, habitat degradation, foreign fisheries, and poor survival in the ocean. They are considered an indicator species or canary in the coal mine. This means that the health of the species is directly affected by the health of its ecosystem.
When a river ecosystem is clean and well connected, its salmon populations are generally healthy and robust. When a river ecosystem is unclean or poorly connected, its salmon population often declines. Atlantic salmon in the United States were once native to nearly every coastal river northeast of the Hudson River in New York. But dams, pollution, and overfishing reduced their population size until the fishery closed in 1948. Wild Atlantic salmon fishing at sea is still prohibited in the United States. All Atlantic salmon on the public market are farmed and commercially grown. Currently, the only remaining wild Atlantic salmon populations in the United States are found in several rivers in Maine. These remaining populations include a distinct segment of the Gulf of Maine population, which is listed as endangered under the Endangered Species Act. Some populations in southern Canada and Europe are also in significant decline, raising concerns about the status of the species globally. Additionally, the Gulf of Maine DPS is one of eight species of concern. This means that NOAA Fisheries has prioritized focusing recovery efforts on research to better understand the key threats and stabilize the Gulf of Maine DPS by improving access to quality habitat and thereby preventing the species from going extinct. Our dedicated scientists and partners use a variety of innovative techniques to conserve Atlantic salmon, and protect and rebuild threatened populations. NOAA Fisheries also works with partners to protect federally designated critical habitat for Atlantic salmon, and makes every effort to engage the public in conservation efforts. Worldwide, Atlantic salmon populations can fluctuate significantly between individual rivers. Returning Atlantic salmon to rivers in northern Europe can exceed nearly a quarter of a million in some years. However, some populations are small, with only a few hundred or even a single individual. While in freshwater, juvenile Atlantic salmon, known as PAR, have brown to bronze bodies with dark vertical stripes and red and black spots. These markings camouflage and protect them from predators. When juvenile salmon are ready to migrate to the ocean, their appearance changes, their vertical stripes disappear and they become silvery with almost black backs and white bellies. When adults return to freshwater to spawn, they are a very bright silver. Once in rivers, they darken again to bronze before spawning in the fall. After spawning, the adults, now known as Celts, can darken even further and are often referred to as black salmon. When adults return to the ocean, they revert to their dominant silver color typically, an Atlantic salmon returning to US waters is four years old, having spent two years in freshwater and two years in the ocean. These fish are called 2C winter fish, or 2SW, and typically measure 28 to 30 inches long and weigh 8 to 12 pounds. The size of adult fish returning to freshwater from the ocean depends on how long they spent in the ocean. 
juvenile salmon that return to freshwater after one year in the ocean, called grills, or 1SW, are smaller than adult 2SW fish. Adult salmon can migrate multiple times to spawn, a reproductive strategy called iteroparity, although multiple spawning is becoming increasingly rare. Atlantic salmon are migratory. They travel long distances from upstream rivers to the Atlantic Ocean before returning to their home rivers. For example, American salmon leave the rivers of Maine in the spring and arrive in the waters off Newfoundland and Labrador, Canada, in midsummer. They spend their first winter in the waters south of Greenland and their second growing season in the waters off the coast of West Greenland and sometimes East Greenland. Adults migrate back to their native rivers in Maine to spawn after one to three years. The diet of Atlantic salmon depends on their age. Young salmon eat insects, invertebrates, and plankton. The preferred diet of adult salmon is herring. Herring, similar in appearance to rainbow smelt, is a long, silvery fish that grows to 8 to 10 inches in length. There are three groups of Atlantic salmon, North American, European, and Baltic. These groups are found in the waters of North America, Iceland, Greenland, Europe, and Russia. Atlantic salmon spawn in the coastal rivers of northeastern North America, Iceland, Europe, and northwestern Russia. After spawning, they migrate across various regions of the North Atlantic. Atlantic salmon populations in Europe and North America mix in the ocean, where they share summer feeding grounds off Greenland. The North American group historically ranged from northern Quebec to Newfoundland and into the Long Island Strait. This group includes Canadian populations and US populations. In Canada, healthy populations persist to this day, However, many populations have been severely depleted. The GOM DPS at listing includes nine remaining populations in central and eastern Maine. Specific river populations persist in the Sheep Scar, Penobscot, including Ducktrap, Narragwigus, Pleasant, Machias, East Machias, and Denny's rivers. GOM salmon leave Maine rivers in the spring and arrive in waters off Newfoundland and Labrador, Canada, in midsummer. They spend their first winter in the sea south of Greenland and their second growing season in the sea off the coast of West Greenland and sometimes East Greenland. Adults migrate back to their native rivers in Maine to spawn after one to three years. Atlantic salmon have a complex life cycle and go through several stages that affect their behavior, appearance, and habitat needs. They are migratory meaning they are born in freshwater, migrate to the ocean as juveniles, and then return upstream to spawn as adults. When they spawn in the fall, female salmon use their tails to dig nests in the gravel where their eggs are laid. These nests are called reds. Over the winter, the eggs develop into very small salmon called smolts. 
In the spring, the smolts swim out of the reds and are then called fry. The fry grow into par salmon, which are only 2 inches long and are camouflaged to protect them from predators. For two to three years, par salmon grow in freshwater before transforming into smolt salmon in early spring. The silver gills and organs of smolt salmon change, allowing them to swim to the ocean, where they spend one to two years maturing into adults. Adult Atlantic salmon return to the river where they were born to spawn. After spawning in freshwater, the adult salmon, now called Celts, swim back to the ocean so they can return to spawn the following year. Females returning to spawn after two winters at sea lay an average of 7,500 eggs. Of these eggs, only about 15 to 35 percent survive to the fry stage. Atlantic salmon populations face a variety of threats. The most significant threats to their survival include barriers such as dams and culverts that prevent them from accessing quality habitat, low freshwater productivity, ongoing fisheries off the coast of Greenland, and changing ocean conditions. Salmon also face many other threats to their survival, such as poor water quality, degradation of freshwater habitats due to land use practices, fish diseases, predation by introduced and invasive species, and interbreeding with escaped fish raised on farms for commercial aquaculture all of these factors are compounded by climate change, and Atlantic salmon are the most vulnerable finfish species in this region to this overwhelming stress.